Well, it is mid-October in southeast Michigan, and we're very fast approaching peak fall color of the leaves. And this year, unlike last year, there's a lot of reds and a lot of beautiful golds. Today, we're doing a reconnaissance trip to see a local area that I've scouted out before, how it's gonna look with peak fall color, and to make sure a couple of locations are still set for us. driving to a favored local spot for fall foliage. It's an area we call Beards Hills. And before you get too excited, the hills are Southeast Michigan hills. So at most they're probably a hundred feet high at most, maybe 40 or 50, but it is a beautiful area with lots of trees, a small river that runs through and generally beautiful scenery. This is one of the potential sites that I thought of for a nice fall composition. As we look out from this cliff or this high spot and look over, there's a river that's meandering down and some layers of trees. I've got some dead trees and some color. I'm thinking an early morning composition, maybe in a mist, maybe in a bit of rain, where we can see some layers of mist or rain or fog through the background to give us our three-dimensionality. I think this might be nice. Well, I had to get out of the wind a little bit to uh, get some little better sound, even with my new uh, dead cat, the red dead cat right here. I'm still getting some pretty serious wind noise. I've just come across my potential site number two, which I actually like a little better than my first one, I believe. And I think this location here might have a little more potential as far as having some layers, because we have a couple of these dead trees. You see one right here, and the other one right here. And actually there's some others that are dying off in this way. So you can make them the focal point uh, maybe stand right about in here. Yeah, I think if we stand right about here, we've got some nice layering of the different colors and different trees that might, uh, might be something nice early in the morning, right at sunrise. And maybe we can get a little light coming through. I think the light coming from the opposite direction of what it is right now, it's early afternoon at the moment. And we have a little different direction of the light. I might uh, work out a little better. And again, I'd love to have a little bit of mist to get some layering where these trees would pop out a little more, these dead ones. And then the, the colors would kind of mute out in the background, but we'd have some nice color up in the foreground. In fact, I think I'm even gonna set up my camera and do a couple of test shots of this right now. I didn't want to take the time to set up the tripod because I could do some stills handheld that would really give me an idea of what's actually going on in this scene. It's, it's actually quite beautiful even with the light that we have at the moment. I'm going to switch my camera over to video. I'll let you actually look through the camera and see what I'm seeing right at the moment here. This is kind of the view I'm thinking of right about here where we've got some nice color and just some nice scenery. If we can get a little light on that river, a little glimmer there, I've got some three dimensionality. And especially if I had a little bit of fog, that would really, really make it a nice three-dimensional image that I think would be quite pleasing for fall. I can see the river and it comes on and through and gives us a direction. I've got a little curve and a little leading line that's both leading us into the image and from the center, then out to the lower right. 
well, how about we do some more reconnaissance and head down this trail and make our way down to the river. down the hill, what I saw and what I set up for is the image that I'm going to put on the screen right now. And that's this rock and I've got some water flowing behind and the leaves and there's a like a canopy of leaves that kind of surround it, that kind of frame it in. And again, today's reconnaissance, we're not setting up to do the final photographs. We're just scouting out some shots for possibly tomorrow's photo shoot. One thing I didn't mention is I was looking at the weather and what is going to happen. And today is just a nice overcast day, a little warm. Um, it's near 70 today here in southeast Michigan. Tonight, however, there's supposed to be some rain, and that's what I'm hoping for. It's a little bit of water on the leaves, get a little bit of glisten, a little more color out of them than what we've got going on right now. And I think that'll, that'll make a nice pop. Also, if there's a bit of mist in the air, we're going to get a little more of the three-dimensionality going on. I'm also using a circular polarizer on the lens. What's that doing is that's getting rid of some of the reflections off the water, give me a little deeper color in the water, and also a little deeper color in the um, leaves as well. In fact, I think what I'll do is, again, I'll switch the camera over to video mode, and I'll be able to demonstrate what's actually going on with that polarizing filter, and you can see what's actually happening. So this right now is the image without any polarization. And as I rotate that filter, you can see what happens to the water behind. Let's go back and forward and back and forward. And it just does an amazing job of deepening those colors and of getting rid of those water reflections. Right there. So a CPL, or a circular polarizer, is almost a necessity for doing photographs of the fall foliage, and especially if you're including water. Well, obviously I've set up the tripod here and I'm doing some, some shots. I'm playing around with the idea of a neutral density filter on this as well. I've got the CPL filter on it, vertical composition. This is the same rock, by the way, that we uh, saw earlier and from the other vantage point. And I'm just looking at it from the other way. And I see I've got one red tree and some green trees around it. I've got some nice water, the leaves caught in here, um, you know, a little bit of flowing water. Right now, I'm set at ISO 200, which is the base ISO of the Fujifilm X-Body cameras. So at ISO 200, I am shooting at F18 at a fifth of a second to smooth that water out a bit. Not quite like glass, um, but uh, we'll still have a little bit of motion in the water. So I've added the ND4 filter, that's two stops, got the ISO set. So right now I'm shooting at F22 at a full one second. Well, hi puppy, how are you? We have a visitor. Hi there. Oh, that's fine. It's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> well, here, now I've got a split screen showing what I'm seeing through the camera as a video. I've had to change the f-stop, though, so the video would read. 
We can also demonstrate that polarizer filter right here. If I unpolarize the light, you can see all the reflections that are coming in. That might be what you want. But also, as we turn that CPL filter, it's almost like you get X-ray vision or X-ray spectacles and can see through and into that water. And it just deepens up the colors so nicely. I've set up for another shot here on the river. And again, this is one that I think looks best in the afternoon light. I always like a little bit of backlighting in my photographs. Now I've photographed this both in a horizontal and in a vertical composition, but obviously I'm set up right now in the vertical composition. I have a log that's fallen down or a tree. Um, I guess a, a tree has fallen down into the river and it's formed a little bit of a dam of some leaves that have coming through. Um, we've got a little bit of running, rippling water, just a little bit right in front of us. Breeze picks up every now and then, and the leaves cascade and fall off the tree into the, this river. So right now I have the camera settings at F11, ISO 200, and a shutter speed of um, about a sixth of a second. And that's giving me a really nice, nice look through this. I liked it both in the vertical and the horizontal composition. I'll let you look at the photographs and leave me a comment and tell me which one you prefer. Good morning. We're back at Beards Hills waiting for the sunrise. We've got golden hour just about to happen as we're here right now. I can just start to see some light skimming across the trees. The colors are just starting to come to life. So we'll see if our plan works out at all. And also zero cloud cover this morning and zero fog. So hopefully there'll be a little bit of a mist in this valley and we'll have a little bit of three-dimensionality that way. It's an amazingly still and serene morning. Totally different than yesterday. None of the wind, none of the um, excess noise. I did lose my new homemade red dead cat that I had made for my microphone. And trying to find something bright red when there's bright red leaves on the ground is next to impossible. But with no wind this morning, I actually don't need any kind of screen or wind cover at all for the microphone. Well, the setup I have here for the shot is actually very, very simple. Again, I've set the camera to an ISO of 200. I've manually set the aperture to F8. I do have this in aperture priority mode. The camera, I'm letting it choose the shutter speed for me. So it's shutter speed of five seconds for this, the way the light is currently. I am expecting that to change pretty rapidly as the sun continues to rise over the horizon. Um, it has The sun has not broken the horizon yet, we're just in the beginning of golden hour. I do really enjoy using the Fujifilm system with their film simulations, they're just excellent. You get the film simulation readout on your screen on the back of the camera or in the EVF as you look through. I was actually going to look and see what I have this one set to right now. Um, I have it set to superior, and then I have it set to cloudy white balance as well. But with no wind, absolute stillness, long exposures are going to be zero issue whatsoever this morning. There's actually a little bit of low-lying fog. I can see some right off in this area right here. hopefully it'll provide a little bit of enhancement. That uh, 
That's a nice development and surprise. Still waiting for the sun to come up over the horizon. I do have this newer remote release for my camera. It just plugs right into the accessory port and fits right on the hot shoe and provides us a really nice way to remotely trigger the camera. It'll work up to two to 300 feet away. It's just given me the ability to operate the camera from quite a distance. You know, still keeps the camera quite steady as we do the photographs. With this little patch of mist that's come up, I've changed the composition ever so slightly. I've turned the camera a little bit to the left to bring that mist a little more into line up with the rule of thirds and zoomed in a little bit to focus a little more on this dead tree that'll be a little more in the center of the composition. The sun is just starting to crest over the horizon, over this valley, and you can see behind me where the sun is just starting to hit the peaks of those trees. And uh, very, very soon, it's gonna be hitting the peaks of the trees in our scene. Well, it had just occurred to me that you could share in this beautiful sunrise that's happening as the light is just starting to skim across the tops of these trees. I've set up the intervalometer on the camera with two second intervals which should give us a nice time lapse of, the, um, of this changing light condition that we're seeing right here. I've stopped the time lapse and quite frankly I have a confession I need to make right now. The light never did come through this area like I had hoped. We did a lot of reconnaissance work, we looked at a lot of different things, but ultimately the angle of the light and just the way things laid out wasn't quite what I had planned on. So I got bored. I, I shut off the time lapse, but what I did was I grabbed one of my vintage lenses, this guy here, which is my Jupiter 8 that I took off of a um, uh, Kiev rangefinder camera and converted and mounted onto this adapter. Did some with an extension tube, a 10 millimeter extension tube, and did also some photographs just with this lens itself. Always wide open at f2.8. Every one of the images you're about to see was done wide open at f2.8. Hopefully you enjoy them. That is going to wrap us up for this week's video. Thanks for coming along on the reconnaissance and the photographs. Sorry my original thought of uh, what was going to happen didn't work out, but we had some great fun with some macro sh shots and the stuff we did yesterday as well. As always, thanks for coming along in these adventures. If you like what you see, it's really important to me. Hit the thumbs up that you like the video. Leave a comment below too as well. So not only can you support our channel by subscribing and liking our videos, you could also buy me a coffee. Link in the description below to buy me a coffee. Your support is always appreciated. Thanks again for joining.